Good day friends, welcome again to another day of reflection, a time we spend each day reflecting upon the Word of God, meditating upon it. Of course, we're coming to you from the students here at Faith Temple, Assemblies of God, 6 Princess Street in Montego Bay. I encourage you to stay with us and to invite someone to join you um, for the next 30 minutes as we meditate upon God's Word. We are on Facebook, we are on um, YouTube, and we are on our channel 253, Cornell Communication Network. Um, I just want to welcome all those who are in the diaspora who from day to day has been listening to us. Each day we come, uh, we come to you from Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. We are on, on um, 12 to 1, today being Wednesday, we normally on um, one o'clock to two o'clock, so please join us today. I am Bishop Everton Lawrence. I am the associate pastor here at Faith Temple. Um, trust that you will be blessed today. Listen now to a song entitled, um, A Wonderful Savior is Jesus My Lord. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each moment he crowns and filled with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such as Redeemer is mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depth of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand when clothed in his brightness transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the salvation is wonderful love I'll shout with the millions on high He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand.
Savior is Jesus my Lord. He eyeth my soul in the cleft of the rock. He eyeth my soul in the depths of his love. A beautiful hymn. We give God thanks. He's certainly a wonderful Savior. Let us pray. Savior divine, wonderful master, we bless you and we glorify you. You are our protector. You are our guide. You are everything to us. You are the one that has paid the price to save us and have given us salvation. And we are grateful today. We've come today one more time in meditation upon your word, reflecting upon the words that you have left for us to live by. I trust that today you'll tabern up with us. I trust that the Holy Spirit will bring new revelations and new inspiration coming out of your word. And all who will hear today We'll have a heart that's anointed to receive and to accept. So bless your words today as we concentrate on you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. We have been on a topic for some time now, a couple of weeks, and we still have some more time to go. Um, how to live triumphantly. How to live triumphantly. We have covered a couple of points which I'm going to briefly mention again this morning. Um, if we're going to live um, triumphantly, we must live in the presence of the Lord, not just um, occasionally be in his presence, but to live in the presence of the Lord. And then we say that um, if you're going to live triumphantly, we must live um, by the promises of God, which simply means that we don't just, um, we have to know the promises. If you don't know it, you can't live in it. So you have to be reminded and you should be really take a stock of them so that when you need them, you can, you can use them. Um, we finished up that somewhat last week, all right? Just stop where we are. And I'm going to go on to the third point in which it is to live triumphantly. We have to live in the peace of God, live with the peace of God. And we still have, I think, at least two more, the power of God and another one. So let me just start going over the basic scripture that we have used um, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 to 58 also Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 and we always like to read them um, set the base upon them because the fact is that it's God's word we're reflecting upon not so much my thoughts so I like to read the scripture so we can somewhat meditate and so let us read them again and let me just remind you of the pointers that we have gone through but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we're talking about triumphant life, victorious life. And this is what we're talking about. It comes through Jesus Christ. So, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that is the Corinthian scripture. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Christian needs to live triumphant. And by so doing, the first thing we said was they must live in the presence of God. And let me read the scripture that we use for that one. Psalms 140 verse 13, it says, Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name, and the upright shall dwell in thy presence the upright the christian the born again believer will dwell in the presence of the lord and we mentioned a couple of these things who actually spend time in the lord and hold their lives were blessed moses 
We said spend time in God's presence and at a tent meeting and on the mountaintop and God's glory shone on his face that the Israelites could barely look at him. He had to put a veil over him. But because of the amount of time he spent in the presence of the Lord, he was able to lead the great nation of Israel. Then on a prophet, Isaiah, he declared that I saw the Lord. Uh, Isaiah saw a vision of God in the temple and he was confronted with his sin and then responded to a call to ministry. The fact that Isaiah was in God's presence, he recognized um, that he was a sinful person. And whenever we get into God's presence, the mirror shows us up for sure. So it showed him, and not only that, he, he answered the call of ministry. Answered the call of ministry. Then we look at um, um, Saul um, of Tarsus. We call him Paul, the apostle now. Um, he encountered a risen Lord on the Damascus Road, and his life was eternally changed. He did not have the privilege like the other apostles to walk in the presence of Jesus Christ day after day. But one day when he was going out to to destroy Christians, to persecute them. And Damascus Road, Jesus met him there. And the light was so sh bright that it blinded him. And that's when he said he met the Lord. Um, then John the Beloved, um, he had a vision of heaven. And God was um, there in the spirit on the Lord's day. So he spent some time in the presence of the Lord. Yes, living in his presence will be that tool that we need to live our lives. And as we live it pleasing to him, um, that is what will give us the victory in this time. That was the present. So the second thing we dealt with was um, live by God's promises. And this is the passage that we use, Second Peter 1 and verse 4, living by God's promises, whereby are given unto us exceeding great Precious promises that by these, by these, he might be partakers of divine nature. The promises of God. Um, we say that some Christians neglect the promises of God. They do not read them. They do not remember them. And they don't claim them for their own. And if you don't do that, you won't be victorious. So the promise of God. You have to read them. In other words, you have to know them. You have to study them. You have to try to remember them on a daily basis. And you have to claim them as your own. To be triumphant, we must live by the promises of God. Uh, Romans um, 15 verse 4 said, We're written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That's how we're going to be living triumphantly. That's how we're going to do it. Um, so, what are some of the promises? It's promise to deliver. And if you're in a trouble, any form of trouble today, then this is a good promise that you need to have on the forefront of your mind. And it's something that we should have because we don't know when trouble is going to set in. And Psalms 50 and verse 15 says, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Very simple. You must know the promise to deliver. And it's God who says, call upon me. And he said, it's when you're in trouble at this time, call upon me. And he said, what? Well, I will deliver you. And then you have a part to give him glory, promises. Then we talk about his promise never to forsake us. Can we live by that promise? Hebrew 13 verse 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Here's a promise. I will never leave you nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. This is a great promise. 
I will not leave you nor forsake you. Why? So that you can say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man can do. That's a promise that is there. The trouble may come. Trouble may come. The clouds may be dark and heavy. But if the Lord be for us, tell me then who can be against us? Who can be against us? Another scripture that we says that we need to remember as far as God's promise is concerned, to live by it, is God's promise of strength. And Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Promise that I will strengthen you until your time come. Promise. Then God's promise that someday our sorrows shall end. This miserable world will come to an end. And all our sorrows and our pains will end. Revelation 21 and verse 4 and 5 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. That's a promise. Right. For these words are true and faithful. So in the midst of tears, remember this hope. One sweet day, one bright and glorious day, God himself shall wipe away all tears. The other promise that we looked at that we should live in is God's promise of everlasting love. Oh, Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of hold unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with righteousness, I have drawn thee. God, everlasting love. So, basically, we had said a lot more because those are a couple of weeks of study um, how to um, be triumphant, live a triumphant life, um, the presence and the and the promises of God. So today, we want to start to talk about how to live um, with God's peace. This is really a very big subject. I Sunday, last Sunday, actually preached, and, and trust me, I'm taking a different line today. I'm taking a different line today. I was trying to explain um, what perfect peace is that God um, has given to us. And today, we're talking about living in the peace to be triumphant. It's a different line I'm going on today. And there's just so much in it to talk about. So, let me lay the scripture for this particular one. John 14 and verse 27. Jesus is now speaking. Speaking to disciples. And this is what he's saying. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. What are we talking about today? Live with God's peace. Jesus Christ himself is the one that mentioned it. He's the one that left it. And not just for the then disciples, but for all of us who have called upon his name. This is the word for us. Peace. I leave with you. The fact that he was not going to be present with them on a, a literal basis because he's still going to dwell in their hearts, but the fact that he was going to return to his father, he's saying, I am going to leave um, peace with you. My peace, he said, I'm giving unto you. And we say that he is the prince of peace. No other can claim to be the prince of peace but Jesus Christ himself. And he said, yes, I will leave my peace with you. Not as the world giveth, because the world can sign all type of treaties, but never ever come to a perfect peace. So it's not what the world give. And uh, I made it clear on Sunday that 
The world didn't give me this peace, and the world can't take it from me. God is the one that gives it. I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be ye afraid. It is a peace that comes only by knowing Jesus Christ. Can I repeat that? The peace we're talking about is a peace that comes only by knowing Jesus Christ. It is not an outward peace that the world tries to manufacture. This peace only comes by knowing Jesus Christ. How do you know Jesus Christ? By accepting him as Lord and Savior. By accepting the price that he paid on the cross at Calvary. By confessing our sins and allowing him to dwell inside of us. That is how this peace comes. Not by doctrine, not by knowledge. This peace comes to us only through Jesus Christ. Only in Jesus Christ. A Christian doctor carried out an interesting survey recently um, involving his patients. As they waited in the waiting room, they were asked to fill out a little survey on themselves. Survey on themselves. One of the questions asked was, what is your number one wish? What do you wish for? What's the number one thing that you desire? And analyzing the answer, the doctor found out that the number one wish of some 6 or 7% of the people that came to him was to have peace of mind. The number one wish of most people today is to have a peace of mind. A peace of mind. But, you know, there's a lot that steals our peace. I call them peace stealers. The fact of the matter is that every person wants to have peace but we so often allow the world around us to steal it away from us the number one thing is that peace of mind but we allow the world around us to steal it from us and therefore most of us live in misery most of us live in fear most of us live worrying most of us live in depression why because the world around us has taken this from us. What of this world has taken it from us? Stress. We are stressed out. We are stressed out. Things bugged us badly. And because we are stressed out, and if you are stressed out, it means that you need to release that stress. You need to find a way to release the stress. Because unless that stress is released, then it's going to rob you of your peace. Worry robs us of our, of our peace. We worry about things we can do nothing about. We worry about things that are past, in the past. You can't do anything at all about what has gone in the past. We worry about things that is so of a minor thing. Minute, yet we are worrying about it. There are some deep problems that comes up, but there's sometimes there are some very simple things that we worry about. We worry about the future which we don't reach yet. Why don't we live today first? And guess what that does? Robbed us. Steal the peace that God wants to give us. We generally rushed off life. I dare say sometimes we need to slow down. Uh, we are too busy. We rush, the general rush of life. We need to get some rest. Uh, you 
yeah, the, the, the cell phone is a good instrument. I don't know how we some minds without it, but that has robbed us because there's no moment of relaxation. You go to bed to sleep, it's ringing. <laughs> you get up first thing, the first thing you do is you're going to look at what's on Facebook or what message you got. Sometimes you're out there in a social event in which you should be relaxing, yet you're texting the rest of life. Some are actually driving. <laughs> so many of us guilty of that. And texting. Talking and not concentrating. And all of that, the rush of life. Um, the rush of trying to get this and trying to get that. We eagerly want so much. We never seem to be contented with what we have. And we keep rushing. And what does that do? Robbed us of our peace. What else? Well, lack of personal confidence can also rob us of our peace. And I dare say to you, don't allow anyone to put you down. Understand that you are special. Understand that when God made you, he made you special. Understand that if you are a child of God, God cherishes you. So don't let anyone put it down. Right? Lack of self-confidence. Have confidence in yourself. Believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will believe in yourself. And because people are suffering from this inferior complex, there's no peace. Think good about yourself. Don't let anyone discount you. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't look good or you don't sound good. Don't let anyone put you down. Hear the word of God that you are his child. And if you are his child, it means that you are special. You are a royal being. You are a prince and a princess unto God. Allow no one to put you down. Make sure you love self-confidence. Other things that can help us to to steal the peace from us disobedience and sin what are these things that can rob us yeah when we stop to covet one another when we are envious of one another these things rob us of our peace I often tell people if God give you there's no question that he will give me. He's an immutable God, an unchangeable God. What is done for others, one song said, he will do for you. If you're a child of God, any one of us who have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can expect that God will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in him, don't covet nobody for nothing at all. The same God who gave them is on your side, he will give you. Don't be envious of anyone of their position or their possessions. Don't be. That's a sin, the Bible says. And if we're not obedient to God's words and stay away from it, then we're going to lose our peace. Malice. That, that can certainly take away our peace. When you allow people to do you things and you're hurt about it and you're keeping a malice, man, that robs you of your peace. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about that person who you're in malice with. You go to the breakfast table, you're thinking about that person. You go to the day at work, that person is still on your mind what they did to you and, and every thought and somehow the person's name is called or not even the exact person name is called, but a name is called, and that thing hits you right away, the malice. You go to bed, and the same thing. I am not going to allow anyone to rob me of my peace. So, I'm going to make every effort to live peaceable with everyone. Paul says, live peaceable 
with everyone if possible. I'm going to make every effort. I'm not going to give up. And one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be in malice with no one at all. Because when I go to my bed, I want to be able to be at peace and I want to rest. These are things that rob you. Selfishness. Think about yourself. Intolerance. You can't tolerate the least thing. Now, you have to understand that Jesus Christ says, my peace I give to you. I leave my peace with you. You have to understand that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And if he dwells inside of you, then these sins are not to be there. And because these sins are in your life, they rob you of your peace. If you are not a born again Christian, I am telling you that these are the very things that are robbing you of peace. And you need to come to Jesus Christ to know him as Christ and Savior and to have peace. But that's only so. You might be a Christian. You might be going to church every Sunday. You might be going to church every time the church door is open. But still, you allow these things to be arboring inside of you that are sin. And you have read it. You have been told over and over again. If you have become a selfish person, if you're only thinking about yourself, if you're only mindful of yourself, then you're not going to have peace. I tell you, and you try it out, when you do something good for someone, when you give someone something, how sweet it feels. It sends something deep down inside of you. You're not selfish. You're willing to share what you have you feel good afterward. Don't allow selfishness to rob you of your peace. You're a child of God and you cannot tolerate certain things. Yeah? You have to be tolerant. This world, people all around is going to rob you. They're going to rob you, rob you the wrong way. And if you're not careful, let's meditate and let's think about it. Let's reflect on it. You, you look in your life and tell me, what do you think is robbing you of your peace? Think about it. Why don't you have peace? Tell me. Think about it. Because, you know, God gives us a conscience. Not only that, but His Spirit dwells inside of you. If you're a child of God, and you ought to be able to identify why you're not having peace. Why you're not having peace. Think about it. Another thing that robs us of our peace is spiritual laziness. I call it spiritual laziness. And I call upon you to work on your time that you spend in the Word of God. Work on the time that you spend reading God's Word. Work on the time that you spend meditating upon God's word. Well, I tell my church every day, I beg, come to Bible study. Last night, because of the rain and I had some other things doing, I was unable to be out. But as soon as I got home, I made sure I logged on to YouTube to catch Bible study. And I can tell you it was good. In Bible study, Minister Green was ministering and teaching teaching on God's holiness, teaching about God. And I can tell you, questions were being asked. And when questions were being asked, and, and I pulled the minister to think back. That's how we learn. That's how we meditate. But some people are just spiritually lazy, and they don't make no effort to even come to a study like that to be blessed. I tell you, try and find it. And if you're not able to, and get online when we are on because we make sure that when it comes to the word of God, we are proclaiming it, proclaiming it every day because we know that that will cause peace to be in your life. Spiritual laziness. How about your praise life? How about your thanksgiving life? How often do you give praise to God? How often do you give God thanks? 
you should go to it they constantly giving God thanks the, every moment something crack up on you you should say thank you Lord every moment you see a blessing coming your way you should say thank you Lord every moment when you look in the atmosphere when you look uh, the majesty and, and the beauty of the sky or a rainbow or whatever you might see a sunset you should say praise be to God wonderful God you should give him worship spiritual laziness we were created to worship God when we don't worship God we ain't gonna got no peace if a thing is made to do something and that thing does not perform it's going to go to naught. and if we were created to worship God and if we don't spend time worshiping God if we become so spiritually lazy there will be no peace no peace until we're doing what God wants us to do peace of God is what we need all right there we talk about peace of God peace with God and I want to dwell a little bit on it first I want to talk about peace with God because if you're going to have genuine peace what the scripture call perfect peace then the first thing you need to do is to have peace with God Mm. Yeah, God recognized that we were his enemies. And so the scripture declared that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when Christ came, he came to reconcile us back to God. In other words, he came to bring us back in favor with God. He came to allow us to have peace with God. And this kind of peace is seen through his salvation salvation gives to us it is found only when a person surrenders their will to God and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior I challenge you again you're not a Christian you're not a born again believer I don't care about church now I'm talking about your relationship with God you don't have to belong to my church all I want you to know is that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because that is the only way when you make peace with God. Jesus Christ has paid the price for that. Jesus Christ has made the way on the cross so that we can have peace with God. We can be reconciled with God. He came to reconcile us back to God. To bring us back into peace with God. But we have a part to play. We have to accept it otherwise we won't have peace so there's peace with God are you at peace with God are you at peace with God to the Christians I say don't live with any kind of sin in your life confess your sin every day each day each moment because you know that when there's sin in your life, there's separation with you with God. You know that that's what God wants. <coughs> so if you know, then why would you want to keep it inside of you? Peace with God means that we can go to God anytime and not be ashamed. Peace with God means that you can walk into anywhere the word of God is being proclaimed. I don't feel guilty. You don't feel any way bad. Peace with God is that we can in a room like this talking, talking about God, and you're not feeling ashamed. You're rejoicing. You're happy. Let's go way back. Adam hid from God. Adam hid from God when he sinned. He lost his comfort spot because he knew that he had gone against God. He knew that he had put himself up to be God's enemy by doing what God said he should not do and he hid himself from God. Many a person today, they're hiding from God. So they're not at peace with God. I knew a man who once told me that uh, 
boy, I, 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 I want to come to her, but I don't like when I come to her. Because when I come to her, sometimes I have to hold on too tight to the bench. Else I'm going to go down to the altar. Afraid. So many are hiding from God. Many of you know that you should be serving God. You're hiding from God. And you can't hide from God. Because wherever you are, God is going to be there. And yes, your conscience is speaking to you. Don't hide from him. Ah, believers, we have an advocate with the Father. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is a scripture that is given to believers. But believers sometimes... We walk around with unconfessed sins. And when you are walking around with unconfessed sin, you are not with peace with God. And when you don't have peace with God, you are not living in the peace of God. And that's when there's no peace inside of you. That's when there's so much problems going on. Peace with God. So there's a peace with God, but there's also the peace of God. What are we talking about? I don't want to stray from our subject. Living triumphantly. Living in victory. How are we going to do that? And we're talking today, living in the peace of God. The peace of God. This kind of peace is described or I should say it's descriptive of the character of God. God is peace. It is this peace that points a person to God as the true and only source of peace. It's the peace that God gives you when you reconcile and you are at peace with him. When you reconcile when you confess your sins and when you are at peace with him, then you get the peace of God. And this is the peace that gives you when you are at peace with him. And this is peace that only the child of God has. Because only person who is at peace with God, only child of God has. This is the peace that the world can't take away. Because only God alone controls it. This is a peace that does not come from your knowledge of world affairs. Is that the peace that even comes from your knowledge of the Bible? Is not your peace that comes from the doctrines that you have been taught? Peace, that, that's not the peace we're talking about. This peace is Christ himself living in you. Christ himself living in you. The peace of God. Think about it. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. When you accept him in your life and he's living inside of you, you have the peace of God inside of you. That is what we call genuine peace or perfect peace. That is the peace that we need. But you have to have peace with God first. All right. Peace from God. This kind of peace is what flows directly from God to the heart of the believer. And Paul calls this peace the peace that passes that understanding. And, and I like that, you know, because. When you are worrying, when you are afraid, you, you don't think well. And you don't seem to understand certain things. The man who is peaceable is mindful of what is going on. And is able to solve a situation much easier than the man who has turmoil going on inside of him. When you are upset, when you are worried, you don't think straight. The Paul causes peace, the peace of God. 
that passeth all understanding. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. It is an assurance that moves with the person on a daily basis. It moves with the person on a daily basis. The peace from God. Let me read the passage that Paul used. Philippians 4 and verse 7. I dwelt on that in my sermon last Sunday. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. That is important. Peace with God. And the peace that God gives you, the peace that comes from God, and the peace of God, because you are reconciled with God, that he gives you, passeth all understanding, keeps your heart. Why? Because the heart will believe. But also keep your mind, because with the mind, you will trust God. And when you have your trust in God, you know that this peace is coming through Jesus Christ. Shall keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Because he is the channel. He is the channel. The Holy Spirit will convey. But Jesus Christ is the channel. He has opened up the way that we can get the peace of God that will guide us through life. Oh, how I wish that a lot of us could live in that peace. This is a miserable world. It is a miserable world. But when you've got peace with God, when you've got the peace of God inside of you, and the peace is keeping your hearts and mine then you can live I don't care what the storm might be if Jesus is inside of you you better believe there can be peace you remember that story where Jesus disciples were out there in the sea and the storm came up it was terrifying the winds was blowing the water was in the boat but when they call upon Jesus, what Jesus Christ did, he spoke peace. He got up and said, peace be still. And the sea calmed down. Any trouble that you're going on in your life today, listen to Jesus Christ speaking peace in your life. Allow him to be in your life so that you can have the peace of God. It will pass all understanding and it will keep you through this terrible, miserable world. Money won't do it. Position won't do it. Possessions won't do it. Only through Jesus Christ. I say to you, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, trust him today. Personal experience, trust him today. I have been living for the Lord for over 50 years. From I was just a youth. I could say for the past 55 years. I've never found a fault in him. He has been faithful in keeping me. And I give God thanks. Trust him today. Turn to him today. If you are a believer, I say again to you, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. A passage written by the apostle to us as believers. Don't live with unforgive sin in your life. Don't live with any kind of sin in your life but allow the peace of God to reign in your heart. I trust today that God's peace is upon you. I'm going to continue, I'm sure, on this vein next week because I'm, I think I'm only about halfway through my um, studied notes. So I look forward how to live a triumphant life, a victorious life. We thought today live with the peace of God. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. 
in a world of misery, in a world filled with war, tensions, in a world where children rise up against parents, parents against children, O oh God, your peace we desire. In the storms of life, there's so much, Lord, that calls the storm to blow. So much that pushed against us from day to day. The rush of life. The many different problems, the social problems, the economic problems. But your peace is more precious. So I pray that for all who have heard, that somehow, Lord, we might cling to your peace. We might make sure that we have peace with you so that your peace can be in us. Some who is listening today is having a problem with health-wise. And because of that, their peace has been shattered. But God, I pray that they'll hold on to your promise your promise of healing, healing is children's bread, that they will accept it. You are the great physician. There's healing in your hands. Heal someone today. Bring back some peace in their life, Lord. Oh, I pray, no matter what the situation might be, might be a situation where they live, or where the shots are firing every night. They need some peace, Lord. Allow your peace to be with them. Allow them to realize that you are with them always. From your promise never to leave nor to forsake. And if you are on their side, then there is going to be victory. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. And for all those who are listening, I declare your divine peace upon them. Peace upon our lives. An everlasting peace that will keep us through this time. We give you thanks today for your peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for viewing with us today. It was a pleasure um, going through. As I go through these studies, it has really been a blessing to me, a strength for me spiritually. I trust it has been strengthening you spiritually also. I ask of you to make sure that you join us every day. Um, a time of reflection. Uh, trust me, if you live in the word of God, you'll find peace. <laughs> uh, one of my points in my son's message was that you get peace through the word of God so I ask you to stay with us on a daily basis. Monday, Tuesday um, Thursday, Friday 12 to 1, today Wednesday 1 to 2 stay with us as we meditate upon God's word each day and in your own time also you find time to meditate upon the word of God. Yes we have two services here at Faith Temple, we have 6 Princess Street in Montego Bay, we meet at um 8 o'clock in the morning and we have a service from 8 to 10 and then we do have our Sunday school we start back last Sunday we have Sunday school going between 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock and we have our second uh, worship service at 11 o'clock I ask you to join us not only that but let me tell you the children need to be trained let me tell you some believers neglect it and you need to sacrifice some time to make sure that your children are getting personal attention. And I know what that value can be in a Sunday school class. We have Sunday school class at 10 each Sunday morning now. Bring them out. You might think that you can do it at, at by yourself. You can't. Bring your children out, 10 to 11. We have Sunday school that we are glad to start back with now. So make sure that children are out. So on Sunday, we have service 8 and 11. Wednesday night is our Bible study, and we are doing good. Uh, we're speaking about God's holiness, and if you come next week, Tuesday, uh, we start um, at 6.30 with praise and worship. We start the study at 7 o'clock, and we're now starting off with some um, questions and answers, and then we're going to the deep study. And then after the study, we're actually doing... Um, testimony. So you could say Bible study and testimony service on a Tuesday night. You can't afford to miss that. 
we try to finish by 8 o'clock. Um, sometimes it's so interesting that a couple of minutes might go over. But you're getting home early, no, nonetheless. I invite you to be out. God bless you. God bless you. Trust him. Allow his peace to be upon you. And I declare again, peace. Peace. Peace unto you. Amen. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, the shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love, and covers me there with his hand, and covers me there with his hand. Savior is Jesus my Lord, he taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved, he giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. That shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. With numberless blessings each moment. He crowns and filled with his fullness divine. I sing in my rapture, O oh, glory to God, for such as Redeemer is mine. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness transformed Salvation is wonderful love. I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my soul in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand.